In Lesson 9.5, Area and Arc Length in Polar Coordinates, we're going to explore how to find the area of a polar region, that is, the area of a region bounded somehow by a polar graph. Uh, we're going to look at cool things like rose petals and what we call inner loops. Um, unfortunately, we won't deal with arc length, although that is in the title of this lesson. Uh, it's not one of the topics that will be covered on your BC exam, so we're just going to leave that alone for now and uh, just deal with area in uh, polar graphs. So uh, what we'll do is we'll find a formula for finding the area of that. Of course, it will involve an integral, just like in the rectangular coordinates. Uh, it's kind of a funky little formula, so we'll explore where this formula comes from, and then we'll do a few examples of finding these areas. So let's go ahead and begin uh, by looking at the formula we'll be using throughout this entire lesson. So before we explore the area uh, or rather the integral for the area of a uh, polar region. Let's first take a look at some basic geometry. And uh, this should be old classic stuff here, but if I go ahead and draw a, uh, my representation of a circle, uh, what we need to talk about is how am I going to find this region of the circle right there? And uh, we'll give that this uh, central angle is theta, and furthermore that the radius of this circle is r. Now, the way we're going to do this is, of course, uh, finding the entire area of the circle, which in this case is pi r squared, and then multiplying that by whatever part of the circle this sector represents. Uh, so uh, how do we figure that out? Well, we know that this sector has a central angle of theta, and we know that the entire circle uh, is a, uh, represented by uh, 2 pi radians. So here we go. We have pi r squared, the area of the circle, multiplied by the part of the circle represented by the sector. Uh, now, of course, if you do a little math here, a little simplification, what we're going to find out is that this equals 1 half r squared theta. 1 half r squared theta is going to be the area of this sector right here. So how are we going to use that to our advantage? And what does that have to do uh, with polar graphs? Well, we've already seen some polar graphs in our last lesson. Uh, so let me just look at a uh, particular polar graph called a rose. A rose kind of looks like this, and it goes around and repeats, and so on and so on. So let's just say I wanted to look at one petal of this rose, which in fact we'll be doing for our first example anyhow. Uh, what I could do is decide that I want to split this petal into a bunch of uh, circle sectors, essentially. So I could say, here's one, and I could say, here is another. And each one of these has their own theta and their own radius. Uh, but notice these are kind of like the Riemann rectangles in a uh, rectangular graph when we were doing uh, areas using integrals of just standard things earlier in the year. Uh, instead of splitting this into rectangles, I'm splitting them into a bunch of triangles, and each one of these triangles has an area represented as one half r squared theta, for whatever theta that is. Now, of course, if I want to make this exact, what I could do is uh, limit these thetas, all right, down to zero. In other words, close up that sector, and close up this sector, and close up this sector, and essentially close each sector. Uh, is what's going to happen here. And uh, if I do that, um, I can do some work. And what I'll end up with is this integral. Uh, the 1 half, uh, which is present in both of these formula, and that 1 half can come outside since it is a constant. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to go from the radial lines alpha to beta, and I'll deal with those momentarily. And then inside, I'll have r squared d theta that d theta uh, representing the differential of the angle, the central angle there. So this is going to be my formula for area. Of course, it could be rewritten um, if we want to use uh, f of theta notation as the area equals 1 half from alpha to beta of f squared of theta d theta. So we could represent it that way. Uh, whichever way you like best works. Uh, but just remember that if we have r equals f of theta, we do need to square that when we put it into the integral. And we need to square it because it represents a part of the area of a whole circle. So that being said, uh, I mentioned that our first example would involve finding the area of one petal of a rose. 
Let's go ahead and take a look at that example right now. So here in our first example, as I said, we are going to try to find the area of one of these petals. Now, all four of these petals are the same, so really we get to choose which one we want. And uh, just by default, I'm going to choose the petal in the first quadrant. I think that's going to be the easiest one. Simply because when we integrate this area, we need to find um, two places where this function hits the pole. Now, notice uh, that at the pole, that's where r equals 0. So to find the two places that we're going to integrate between, uh, let's just set r equal to 0 and solve this equation. Now, if we do that, of course, uh, what we will get is that theta equals 0, uh, because 6 sine of 2 times 0 would be 0. Uh, but also, we're going to get uh, pi over 2 as the next place, the next theta, where r equals 0. And you can verify that yourself. Um, and so what we're, going to in what we're going to do to find the area of this petal is we're going to integrate uh, between 0 and pi over 2. Now, our area formula for a polar region is 1 half uh, times the integral uh, between these two places that we just determined of r squared d theta. Now, our r squared, here is the r. And we are, of course, going to square that. And here is our d theta. So that will give us the area of that first petal. Now, uh, this particular one, we might be able to run through a calculator. Uh, but just for the sake of some practice, let's go ahead and actually work this out. Um, if I square the r, that will give me 36 sine squared of 2 theta. And uh, that should be a 2 theta d theta. Uh, there is a very, very important uh, identity that we do need to know for this. And in fact, we will need it throughout the rest of this chapter, or rather this lesson. So let me go ahead and give this to you right now. Um, we do need to know that uh, sine squared of u is equal to 1 minus cosine of 2u all over 2. Uh, that one we're going to use here, because we do have a sine squared of 2 theta. However, uh, let me give you another one besides, and you really should write this down. Uh, in case you in case you uh, forget it at any point, uh, but these are good to remember. Uh, the cosine squared of u is one plus cosine of two u over two. So these are very similar. Uh, just remember that the sine squared uh, is a subtraction problem, while the cosine squared is an addition problem. So as long as you remember that, we should be okay. Uh, let's go ahead and take this 36. We'll pull it out, and that will give us 18. Uh, and again, we'll integrate from 0 to uh, pi over 2. And we're left with the sine squared of 2 theta. Now, your first uh, instinct might be to go ahead and uh, try to do a u du substitution. But I can promise you it won't work. If you let u be sine of 2 theta, then we have u squared. But where's your du? And there's the problem. We don't have that du. And so what I'm going to do is rewrite this uh, using one of the identities that I just gave you in blue right there. Uh, sine squared of 2u, if I use this one, is actually equal to 1 minus cosine of 4 theta all over 2. Uh, let's see here. So if I put this over 2, now this is one I will be able to do. Uh, and th this should say 4 theta. It's kind of hard to see, but there we go. Uh, if I take this 1 half and pull it out, uh, of course, that will give me 9. Uh, we'll integrate this from 0 to pi over 2. And this will give us 1 minus cosine of 4 theta. Now, from here, I will leave this up to you to do. This is not a very difficult integral. Um, and in fact, uh, this is cosine of u. So if you deal with that a little bit, um, Wow, I said I'm going to leave this up to you, but I guess uh, I do feel like doing this. Uh, this is a fun problem. So if I integrate this, the integral of 1 d theta is just theta. And uh, we have minus the integral of cosine 4 theta. Uh, that's actually going to give us minus 1 fourth uh, sine of 4 theta. Uh, that is using a, do, uh, a u du substitution there. So you can see that on your own. And we'll integrate this from 0 to pi over 2. Uh, in doing that, uh, let's see what's going to happen here. If we use the fundamental theorem of calculus and plug in our pi over 2, uh, this will give us pi over 2 minus 0 when we plug in our pi over 2. And if I plug in 0, 
that's going to give us, well, 0 minus 0. So that wasn't too hard to do. And let's go ahead, and that's going to give us 9. Well, do some math here. You see that all of this garbage is just going to be pi over 2. And so what are we going to find for our area of one petal? We're going to find that the area of one petal is 9 pi over 2. Of course, if I want the area of the full region, there are four petals here. So I could just uh, multiply that one petal by 4. That'll give me the full region. But that was not what the question is asking for. We did just find one petal of this rose graph. And the area of this petal is 9 pi over 2. So hopefully that made sense. Uh, just remember that the formula for the area of a polar region is 1 half the integral of r squared d theta. Most people forget that 1 half, but don't forget it. That is very important. And that being said, let's take a look at another area. Uh, this next one will involve what we call an inner loop. Let's take a look now. And so here is a picture of the inner loop, which we need to find the area of. When we say the inner loop, notice that in this graph, there is kind of an outer loop. That's the main part of the graph. Uh, but there is this little bit right here. And that's the part we're going to try to find the area of. Now, what's important about this? Well, we need to find the bounds that represent that inner loop. Your first instinct is probably just to use that theta equals 0. But that actually will not be correct here. In fact, if you plug 0 into our polar equation, you'll find that r equals 4. In fact, this is where theta equals 0. So don't go using that point. That's not going to work. Um, if you plug pi into this equation, you will also find that r equals 4. And that's going to be the location right over here. So certainly what we're looking for, the two points that make this inner loop, are going to be somewhere between 0 and pi. Uh, what's the best way to find those values? Uh, very simple. We're looking for where r equals 0 at the pole. So let's go ahead and try that. Uh, if we set r equal to 0, we'll have 0 equals 4 minus 6 sine theta. And uh, if you do a little bit of work here, what you'll find is that theta is actually going to be the arc sine of, uh, let's see here, what is this? It's going to be the arc sine of 2 thirds, 4 sixths if you like, but I'm going to reduce. The arc sine of 2 thirds. Now certainly we can find uh, one of them, one of the thetas, very, very easily. You can just get to your calculator, type the arc sine of 2 thirds, and what we'll find is that one of those thetas is going to be the decimal uh, 0.7297. Of course, you shouldn't just use the decimals. You should store that value. Um, in fact, what I'm going to do is store it as A, although I'm going to type it here as alpha. All right, so that's going to be our first bound of integration, our lower bound. Um, that's where, when we come around, we're first going to hit the pole. Of course, then we form the inner loop and hit the pole one more time. And that's what we need to find, the other value for theta. Well, that's going to be a little bit more difficult. You can't just type that into a calculator. But if you think a little bit about our unit circle, and pretend that that is the unit circle, a, a very uh, crude drawing of it, uh, where sine is 2 thirds. Remember that sine is the y value. So we're essentially looking at where are we 2 thirds of the way up. And of course, that will happen at this point, which we've already determined is 0.7297. And it will also happen at this point back here. So how do we find uh, the value of that? Remember that this right here is the arc that gives us the radian measure of 0.7297. Well, that is the exact same arc as this one over here. Except here I'm starting at 0 and adding that much. Here I will start at pi and subtract that much. Um, Back in pre-calculus or trigonometry, you probably learned how to find these two values, but it could possibly be long gone. So I'm just trying to remind you here. If we start at 0 and add 0.7297, that will give us a sine value of 2 thirds. And likewise, if we start at pi and go backwards, in other words, subtract that 0.7297, uh, that will give us our other value. Try this. This would actually be point, uh, 2.411. One, eight. Try it yourself. Do the sine 
of 2.4118 and see if you don't get two-thirds. It is correct. And so those are going to be our upper and lower bounds, uh, 0 0.7297 and 2.4118, which uh, for this problem, I'm going to call that beta. All right. Well, now I think we're good to go. Uh, the area of that inner loop is simply going to be one half times the integral from alpha to beta. I could rewrite those decimals, but so long as I've already defined them, which I did here, I can just use their symbolic notation, alpha and beta. Uh, let's see, then I need to do r squared. r is uh, 4 minus 6 sine theta. I need to square that and d theta. Now, a little bit of good news, a little bit of bad news. Uh, the bad news is, this looks hideous. If I square that, what am I going to get? It's going to be a 16 minus 48 sine theta plus 36 sine squared theta, and then I need to integrate all those parts. It's going to be hideous. That's the bad news. Here's the good news. Since I see that I'm using decimals in this problem, I may as well skip all the work, pick up my calculator, and just type this right in. Now remember, I'm not going to type 0.72997, and I'm not going to type 2.4118. I have those stored in my calculator already. Maybe I stored them as A and B, or X and Y, or whatever, whatever. But I'm just going to simply run this through my calculator, let it do the work for me, and I'm going to find out that that inner loop has an area of 1.763 uh, units squared. I didn't put unit squared on the last problem, although I should have, but whatever. This is going to be the area of that inner loop according to my calculator. So there you go. As soon as you have a problem that introduces ugly, nasty decimals, that's a clue right off that this is a calculator-based problem, and you should feel free to use your calculator to finish it out. So with that, we are now going to move into our third example, uh, where we're simply going to find the intersection of two polar equations. This is a nice one. I think you'll enjoy it. In our third example, we're going to try to find the uh, two points of intersection of these two polar graphs. Uh, r equals 3 plus sine theta. That's going to graph as a circle, as you see over here. And r equals 2 cosecant theta, which is actually going to graph as a horizontal line. Now, of course, we're trying to find these two points of intersection. There's one of them right here and one of them right here. Uh, we can try to estimate those. Uh, and you notice that the first one we hit uh, looks like it's, uh, what, about one, two, three, maybe three and a half or so units uh, from the pole. So R will be uh, about three and a half. Uh, and theta, the angle, uh, looks like it's going to be just a little bit more than pi over six. So we can certainly estimate. Uh, and then this other one, uh, this point over here, same r, it's going to be the same distance from the pole, about 3.5. Um, but its theta value is going to be just a little bit short of 5 pi over 6. So we, can, as I said, we can certainly estimate these, but let's find the actual points of intersection here. Now, how are we going to do this? Uh, very simple. We need to find uh, where this blue line and where this red circle have the same distance from the pole. In other words, their r's are going to be equal. And that's going to make things really easy for us. We're simply going to say uh, that 3 plus sine theta, which equals r, and uh, 2 cosecant theta, which equal r, are actually going to equal the same r. They're going to equal each other. So uh, from here, it really just becomes an exercise in algebra. Uh, really no big deal, hopefully. Um, I could multiply everything you see here uh, by sine theta. And if I multiply everything by sine theta, that will get rid of this cosecant business over here. And uh, what I'll end up with is 3 sine theta uh, plus sine squared theta. And over on the right side of this equation, this will simply equal 2. Now this looks a lot like a quadratic equation, and in fact it is. If I rearrange the terms, I'll have sine squared theta. Uh, that'll be my, my u squared, uh, if you want to do a u substitution. I'll have 3 sine theta. Again, there's my u. And uh, minus 2 equals 0. So let's do a little bit of work here. This is really just algebra 2 type stuff. Um, but I'm going to use the uh, quadratic formula 
to try to solve for sine theta. And if I do that, of course, sine theta is going to equal negative b uh, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Or to simplify this a little bit, uh, negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 17 over 2. All right, so that's what sine theta is going to equal. Of course, if I want to get theta by itself, uh, I'm going to have to do an arc sine to both sides. And so theta is going to be the arc sine of this uh, nasty thing that I have going on. Uh, let me rewrite that here. Now, certainly it goes without saying that this is not a uh, special angle on the unit circle or anything like that. Uh, it is quite ugly. And so what I'm going to do is use my calculator to try to solve this. Um, this shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, I'll have theta equals, uh, let's see, if I do all this with the plus sign, I'll have the arc sign of negative 3 plus the square root of 17 over 2. And uh, that'll give me something. In fact, if I run that through my calculator, uh, that will give me that theta could be uh, two different values. Um, theta could be 0 0.2. 596 according to my graphing calculator uh, theta could also be uh, let's see here 2.545 those are the two values I get uh, down here if I try the subtraction sign I'll get the theta equals the arc sine of negative 3 minus the square root of 17 over 2 and the problem with that of course this evaluates to something that is less than negative 1 and I can't do the arc sine of anything that's less than negative 1. So this one becomes very easy. It is impossible. And so taking my two values that I got for theta, if I run both of those back through either one of these two equations, either one will work, uh, what I'm going to get is that my r for both of them is going to be 3.561, which is nice. Didn't we say when we estimated that both of them look to be about three and a half units away from the pole? So there we go, 3.561. Uh, this will be our first theta that we found, uh, 0 0.596. That will represent this point right here. And then our other point, uh, we have the same r, as we said earlier, uh, but our new theta will be 2.545. And if you run that through a calculator, you will see that that is just a little bit short of 5 pi over 6. That's the point right there. And so those are our two points of intersection. It's done the same way we've done it for years in algebra. We just take the two equations, set them equal to each other, solve for a variable, and then plug that variable back into the equations to find the other variable. And there are our two points. Our fourth example that we're going to hit here is going to be a little bit more complex than the first three. Uh, but let's take our time and see how this fourth example works out for us. For our last example, uh, as per the directions, we're going to try to find the area of the common interior of these two uh, cardioid graphs that I have written down right here and graphed right here. Now, if you take a look at these two graphs, we can see that the common interior is going to be this area here as well as this area here. Immediately, we should be clued into the fact that if we just find the area of one of those interior regions, we can just double it. Uh, these are very symmetrical. They're exactly the same area. So let's just find the area of one. In fact, uh, finding the area of one of these interiors might be a little bit difficult still. So uh, take a look at this right here. Uh, this is the graph of the 3 uh, quantity 1 minus sine theta down here. And in fact, if we take a look at this, if we can find the area of this region right here, we can actually multiply that by 4 and have the area of the whole common interior. The reason for that is that uh, this is the top part of this right here. In fact, uh, if I shade that in, it would be this. So certainly that part down there is equal to this part right here. It is also equal to this part right here and that part right there. I'm going to find this region, this region right here, and just times it by 4. That should do it for me. Now, 
Uh, of course, I do need to find the bounds of this region. If I'm going to integrate, I need to know where I'm integrating from and where I'm integrating to. So that's going to be very important. Um, I'll leave it up to you to, uh, to decide how to do that best for you. Uh, but I'll go ahead and throw the bounds here for you. So our area is going to be four times the area of this, of this little sliver of a region right here. And that sliver of a region is going to be 1 half times the integral. Um, and I'll tell you that uh, this integral is going to go from 0 to pi over 2 again. And this time, I'm only dealing with the blue graph. So this is going to be 3 times the quantity, uh, 1 minus sine theta. But of course, I will need to square r and have my d theta here. Now, this, uh, this might be a little pain in the butt here. There's no decimals, so I don't think I can use a calculator on this problem. Uh, of course, I can use a calculator, but I'm not sure that I should. Uh, so let me just work this out um, algebraically. Of course, if I square this big nasty thing, uh, what I'm going to end up with is simply 9 minus 18 sine theta and uh, plus 9 sine squared theta. It's not pretty, but... It will work for us. So, uh, and in all truth and honesty, uh, I can integrate the 9, no problem. I can integrate the 18 sine theta, no problem. Uh, this 9 sine squared theta is going to give me problems, however. So, I will now remind you uh, that sine squared theta, again, is equal to 1 minus cosine of 2 theta over 2. So I'm going to do that little substitution right here. Uh, of course, you might be asking, well, what about with this 9? Can I pull this 9 out? And uh, certainly, I can do that. And um, in fact, maybe I should do that about right now. If I pull the 9 out, that'll give me 18 on the outside, uh, 0 from pi over 2. And uh, before I integrate, let me just, uh, well, this will be 1 now. This will be minus 2 sine theta. The 9 I already pulled out, so what I'm left with here is simply going to be uh, plus 1 minus cosine of 2 theta over 2. Now, this will require a little bit of simplification, combining uh, the 1 and the 1 half together and all this good stuff. Uh, again, I'll leave that as an exercise to you. Um, but once I go ahead and integrate that, simplify and integrate, uh, this is going to integrate to uh, 3 halves theta. That 3 halves comes from the 1 plus the 1 half that you see right here. So it's 3 halves theta, three halves theta excuse me. Uh, the minus 2 sine theta is going to turn into plus 2 cosine theta. And then all I have to deal with is this uh, negative cosine 2 theta over 2. Um, and when I do that, what I'm going to end up with is minus 1 half, uh, or actually it'll be minus 1 fourth, rather after I integrate of sine 2 theta. So there is my integral. Uh, I just need to evaluate this from 0 to pi over 2. And if I do that, I'm going to skip a few steps here just for the sake of time. My assumption is that you can work this out on your own, so you don't need me to do it. Uh, however, when I do plug in the pi over 2, what I'm going to end up with is 3 pi over 4. And when I plug in the 0, I'll simply end up with minus 2. So if I go ahead and simplify that a little bit, uh, do a little bit of algebra magic, what I'm going to end up with is 27 halves pi minus 36. And that right there is going to be the area of the entire common region of these two graphs. I found this, multiplied it by 4 at the get-go. Had I not done that, I would have gotten something else. I'd multiply that by 4, and I'd end up with the same result. So it all works out the same in the end. All right, so uh, that is how we do area of polar regions and polar graphs and polar equations and all kinds of polar uh, fun and excitement. Um, just remember that the formula for area does have a 1 half in front, and it is r squared d theta, not just the r, r squared d theta. Finally, if you remember these two conversion formulas, that one and the one I showed you earlier, that'll make life a lot easier for you as you proceed throughout this assignment. And, of course, as always, I wish you good luck.